Hi, we're here going to tune a star mast today. First thing we want to do is make sure that we're set up properly on the sawhorses. The bottom of the mast wants to be on the sawhorse, um, the sawhorse as close to the bottom mast as possible, and you want to have the second sawhorse set up so that it's just underneath the intermediates in the jib box. If you have a new style mast, after you pop your force stain, you want to be certain to get your rubber stop in to hold your force stain. You'll also want to make sure that you tape the rubber stop in so that your force stay never falls out while you're sailing. All right. The next thing we like to do is make sure that the mast is perfectly straight. If you can see through your sail track from the top to the bottom of the mast, then your mast is ready to go sailing. We'll also check that the mast has no kinks or bends fore and aft. When you're measuring your intermediates, you want to make sure that your force stay and jib hired are not caught inside the intermediate to get an accurate measurement. Measuring intermediates, we pull the intermediate down the front of the mast with a edge, careful not to push on the mast very hard, and mark with a needle into the mast and a magic marker to make a small mark. We'll use the same technique for the upper shroud, and we're done. I like to make sure that the distance between the two here is 2 and 15, 16 inches or about 74 and a half millimeters. Another system is to use a spring scale to measure intermediates and let the hook on the spring scale mark the mast. In this case we're pulling about 18 pounds to measure our intermediates and our upper shrouds. Intermediate's done the same way. If we have to adjust the intermediate to get to our mark, we want to make sure that we don't over tighten this nut. It's easy to wrench this apart and break it. With the shrouds connected, we'll pull both shrouds down the mast to see if they're about the same length before we go sailing. You can also do this with a piece of line or even a fish scale. We also double check the lowers to make sure they're about the same length before we go sailing. To measure the spreader angle, I take a piece of shock cord on a cotter pin and put that in on each end to measure it. If you don't use the shock cord and the cotter pin, some people will take the a piece of string and tie it around this screw or around the pin to measure their spreader angle. To measure the spreader angle, I like to set it so that the angle is at five inches. You can go more than five inches for a light air. Five inches seems to be a really good all-around number. Next, to make sure the spreaders are the same distance back on both sides, we'll tape a batten to the mast butt and see if the batten's parallel to the ends of the spreader tips or parallel to our shock cord. This mast isn't quite right, so we're just going to give it a little tweak with the Allen key. When we hook the shrouds up to the spreader pin, I like to make sure that this knurled part is facing forward so it doesn't have any chance of ripping our sail when we're going downwind. Additionally, we want to make sure that this isn't twisted when we're putting it together. Once we get the screw in tight, we want to be sure to wrap this with a piece of tape so it can't come out when we go sailing. Otherwise, you can lose your shrouds and lose your rig. If you have a new mast and need to cut your backstays, we like to measure from the top of the black band to the backstay. On this mast, it's 7.5 inches. If you like to reduce your windage, you can get as close is six inches. For the lower back stay, we like to go about 12 inches. In this mast, it's almost 13. For a wire main hired, it's good to put a little bit of wax around the ball to make it lock more easily. For the wire jib hires, if you put wax on the wire where it goes around the non-turning phenolic shift, it makes it more easy to go up and down. 